Uh, here is a Motorola Model 56X11 from around 1947. Uh, I had this sent in by a local uh, person not too far away. It said this uh, set belonged to his grandmother and uh, wanted it repaired. So they found it up in her attic. It had been sitting up there for probably 40 years and uh, it definitely looks that way. But anyway, uh, it was sent in for repair, so let's see what the deal is. They said they hadn't even plugged it up. They know the electronics probably needed to be restored, and they didn't want to mess with it. All right, plugged in. filter cap no surprise there all right so we want to pull the chassis out so the first thing we're going to need to do is pull these knobs and there's uh, three screws under the bottom here that'll need to be removed and I'm sure the chassis will probably just slide right out all right here's the underside of the chassis and it looks like we have pretty much all of our original caps um, Looks like this sprig here is a replacement here. Going to the volume pot. But other than that, it looks pretty much all original. Even have our original made in the USA uh, orange Motorola filter capacitor here, which is <laughs> probably a good reason why, it, why it's bad. Let's see. Yep. Our original Motorola filter cap so this is a three section filter capacitor indicating by this uh, our red is 40 microfarads blue is 20 microfarads and orange our orange is 20 microfarads uh, and of course the uh, negative is black all at 150 volts so that shouldn't be too much of an issue to replace all right so it's been a little while since i've gotten in depth about how to do this and just in case there's some new subscribers out there that may want to know how to replace these filter caps if your radio is humming um when you turn it on it's going to be the filter cap most likely and uh, in these old sets this is pretty much what they look like sometimes they'll be standing up mounted uh, on the chassis itself and then uh, a wire coming out the bottom and it'll be grounded to chassis if it's uh, a transformer operated set it's most likely going to be grounded through the chassis but on these uh, transformer list sets they have what they call a floating ground in these things and uh, let me get something to point this out here you have your your black lead that comes off this side of the filter cap and this runs down up under this cap and then to the back of the power switch which is this on and off volume switch here now this is the line that comes in off the cord here which is going to be your neutral or your negative off your line cord and it switches this on so this is going to be what they call your floating ground this is not hooked to the chassis but it is a separate ground that's run throughout the radio so what i want to do is i want to uh, to follow this red wire here and we're going to follow it back over to this location is where it ends at now your modern capacitors do not look like this or not like that. You can use these electrolytic, uh, I use the radial lead ones. They seem to be a little bit easier to mount like that on top of here. And they, you know, really kind of save space. And this will be completely gone and you'll just have this mounted in here. Now what we want to do is we want to find uh, a point to this ground here, but we're going to mount this here and we just need a nearby ground that's hooked to this series of ground here, but not, you can't ground it to the chassis because that's not 
the circuit ground that is chassis ground or a lot of people say the chassis on these things are actually hot so they're a part of the hot line so we don't want to do that so what we want to do is we want to trace from here so what we're going to do is we have this line here where my screwdriver is there and then this is soldered to here and then this runs under here up under this cap here and is soldered right here all right so then we have this jumper wire here with the sheath over it that runs over to the other side of the tube which is here well our connection point is going to be here so this right here is a prime example of where our hot needs to be or the positive side of the capacitor needs to be and the negative side of our capacitor because that runs right directly back to where this cap is hooked up anyway so this will make a good mounting point for our new filter capacitor and in this case I don't have a 40 microfarad so I'm gonna um, hook up two 22 microfarads which will give us 44 microfarads which is will be just fine all right so I have two 22 microfarad capacitors hooked up positive to positive and negative to negative as you see both hooked up to uh, our little meter and we have about 44 microfarad so that should work for our 40 microfarad side on our capacitor our 40 microfarad section all right so we got our filter caps installed our um, positive to positive I put a little heat shrink on there to keep it from anything arcing and then our negative over here to the negative side and um, then I replace this cap because it was in the way it was over there that's a 0 0.05 so we went ahead and replaced that uh, I usually like to replace the uh, these paper caps the first ones I like to replace are in the audio and the uh, rectifier circuit all right so the next uh, section of our cap here is uh, 220 microfarads which is going to be real simple you just I'm just going to use 122 microfarad these caps are rated at 200 volts they should be just fine so our hot wire is going to be our orange wire and then we're going to want to go back over here and tie into this negative over here but it's a little far to get over here so what I'm going to do is utilize some of our old uh, negative wire that comes off of our cap here just cut it down a little bit make a connection solder it and just heat shrink it together and then we'll make our other hot connection or positive connection over here to the uh, the base of this tube here all right we got all of our filter caps changed we got our 22 microfarad cap over here to, to ground and then connected to our tube base there and all of our other our other two sections were over here uh, used two capacitors make 40 so anyway that's done so now um, let's plug it up and see if it works I got our bulb working too the old one was blown all right seems to be working Picking up quite a bit of interference. On China, that's their region of the world. They have an interest in this, and I don't think they want them. That wall warp interferes. That's a whole lot better there. Listen online to hundreds Speakers of rattling. 
Then They're probably going to need a new speaker. You can request prayer. Speakers and don't need to be replaced. Booklet. Even submit your own testimony for consideration as an unshackled radio drama. Go to the PG. Please, is all just a, a giant North Korean trick. Okay, let's say it's a trick. A 970 way off in the background. Not too bad for just the back of set antenna. Let's see what we got for a speaker around here. All right, so I removed the original speaker here, which is here, and then I've got this speaker here, which has a shorter mount, or will be the mount, the back of the magnet part of it. Um. So if it goes like this, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, this, this plate here mounts to the chassis. Originally it went this way with the flange pointed backwards, but if I take it and flip it over, it may make it short enough to make this fit in here. It's the same size speaker but it's just a little bit different so I think the thing is it looks like it's going to be just slightly out further than it was originally so if that's a problem I can always slide this plate back but if you mount it up to the original holes here um, it, it makes it out a little a little further out when it's flipped that way but if I can move it back say a hair there if it becomes an issue I can redrill those two holes and just remount it but uh, as of now this speaker here doesn't have these mounting holes like like this one does so I'm gonna have to drill some holes and hopefully uh, I can get something tapped in here or you know something just enough to mount it up um, even if it's one, or preferably I'd like to get two in here. Uh, I don't know. They have these tapped, so the th they'll thread directly into the metal there. But even if I have to drill holes and put a nut or something in there, I may be able to do that. And uh, just some way to get it mounted up. We'll just have to see what we're working with. All right, we got our speaker mounted up, and uh, unfortunately, it is um, it is out too far. Uh, this speaker here is probably going to have to be level with about the back part of, or the very face of this dial, not including this dial glass or plastic is what it really is. But it's going to have to be mounted flush with this here. So. Um, uh, we're gonna have to move the bracket back some more and either tap new new screws uh, holes in the bracket or uh, tap new screw holes into the chassis probably would be easier to do it in the uh, chassis all right I ended up getting the speaker mounted but not the one that I had originally intended to uh, mount up uh, I went to the trouble of mounting it up and uh, then it didn't decided not to work after that so I had to go with this little generic just permanent magnet speaker That's all I had so I ended up tapping some holes into here up here and then these two at the bottom and it seems to mount up pretty good and it's back behind this over here so it should mount should mount up okay and uh, looks like it's about the same size so sounds okay 
So, should work okay. Johnson has written him a letter and responded uh, as... Like that needle stick in there. Put this needle sticking a little bit. I can't get to it because this is bratted on or uh, riveted on. So it seems to be working pretty good, and uh, I think I'm gonna get into replacing the rest of the caps and do some resistor checks on it and make sure everything's up to snuff but she's playing all righty we got all of our uh, all of our capacitors and resistors replaced and um, I think I only I had to replace uh, all of them but about three of the original resistors they were way out of tolerance and uh, so I guess now we want to try to get into see what kind of condition these tubes are in and uh, I may uh, may do a, a, a little bit of an alignment on it I really don't think it needs a whole lot it's picking up pretty well but we'll probably try and touch that up as well and here's our old parts pile right here all right we've got our uh, 35z5 up on the tester here and I want to see what it's uh, what it's doing I'm already let it warm up so let's see what it reads oh yeah about uh, 720 there so plenty fine nothing wrong there all right and here is our 50l6 audio output tube this is a tongue sole replacement And about the same, just about 720. So definitely nothing wrong here. All right, this is the 12 SQ7, which is the first audio tube. And it's reading about 680, so nothing wrong there. All right, here's our 12 SK7, which is our IF tube. And it looks a little on the weak side. I believe I have a few of these tubes so let's see what we got I see it climbing up but then when you release it um, and give it a second and hit it again it uh, it drops back off so it's I'm not gonna show that now but uh, it was a minute ago all right and here's another 12 sk7 out of my box and that checks a whole lot better so I think we'll uh, Replace the that one the old one with this one All right, and finally here's our 12 sa7, which is our RF tube RF amplifier tube And it's checking over 700 so should be good here All right with our generator set to 455 kilocycles I'm gonna do a quick alignment on this thing And I'm using a metal screwdriver, but this is not a variable inductor. It's a variable capacitor, so it doesn't matter.
All right, I got the cabinet all cleaned up and got it put back in there and this thing is picking up uh, stations all over the dial so it's got a good sensitivity on it for a little 5T radio. More than a century. Now with more than 650 attorneys and strategic legal services from coast to coast, Dinsmore is there to help you accomplish more. Their experience and insight lies and lies. And now unless they were to allow inspections of, of, a, of a sort that, that is unimaginable in a country that's paranoid, then how can we... Like all the stations are down at the bottom of the dial or the top of the dial. Not a whole lot down at the bottom. and then participate as an officer of the court in trafficking illegally obtained information. Was way up high 
spend on his IRS taxes. I was like way over my head. They were still standing. There is not not a butt has left the building, but there also was not a butt in a seat as they were applauding their squad here at Game 7, even in a loss. Well, they understand. <laughs> Pick up some strange stuff sometimes. interesting right there all right here's my 1947 Motorola 56 X 11 playing again and sounding good well it's not mine it's the customers but uh, <laughs> mine for a little while while I'm working on it anyway uh, playing good and glad to get this one uh, going again if you like the uh, the channel uh, consider subscribing and maybe click that bell icon to get uh, future updates when I post videos. Appreciate y'all watching, guys. Have a good one. I can